Hello everybody and welcome back. This is Swati Gupta, Chartered Accountant. Today we are going to study International Financial Reporting Standard 5 or you can say Indian Accounting Standard 105. Now all the IFRS in India are numbered in 100 plus series and therefore you can see the numbering of IFRS 5 as India's 105. Okay, I think I'm pretty clear. Okay, now both these standards can be studied together because there is no sort of carve or difference between them. Good. Now, the name of the standard is Non-Current Asset Held for Sale. So before we move ahead, I have two quick announcements for you. Firstly, all the India standards, all the IFRS, IAS are being recorded in both Hindi and English language. So whichever language suits you better, you can check out the video in that, watch it and make your concepts clear and strong. Now both these playlists are available on the channel, you can check it out. Other than this, all the new videos on India's are being recorded and released on 6 p.m. every Friday and Saturday. So subscribe to the channel, hit the like button so that you don't miss it. And in case if you like the video, then hit the like button. Okay, I think we're good to start. Let's begin. Firstly, let's discuss about the non-applicability of IFRS 5 or India's 105. Okay, so situations where it is not at all applicable, you don't have to treat according to the standard. Okay, what is it? Firstly, deferred tax. In case of deferred tax, don't apply the standard. In case of employee benefit asset, don't apply the standard. In case of financial asset, don't apply the standard. In case of biological asset, don't apply the standard. In case of insurance contract, don't apply the standard. Okay, so in short, in these five situations, in this, according to these five uh, assets, you don't have to apply India's 105 or you can say IFRS 5. So the question arises, where do we have to apply this standard? Okay, now, answer to this is that application of IFRS 5 or India's 105. PPE held for sale, that is property, plant and equipment held for sale. Okay, secondly, intangible asset held for sale. Thirdly, investment property held for sale. And fourthly, investment, any investment held for sale. Okay, these are five assets, these are four assets where you have to apply the standard. Okay, if they are held for sale. Now, for understanding these assets specifically, you have specific standards for that. All the videos are being recorded and available on the on the channel, so you can check it out. Okay. Other than this, for doing the standard, there are four assets: that is PPE, intangible asset, investment property, and investment, where you have to apply the standard. Okay. I think I am clear. Okay. Now, classification of non-current asset: an entity can classify a non-current a non-current asset as held for sale only and only when, only and only when if carrying amount will be recovered from sale rather than use that it will be recovered the fair value the carrying amount will be recovered from sale rather than from being it from using it okay from using it now condition is very important condition to be for classifying such asset as held for sale there are two major conditions that is it should be available for immediate sale for example you have a building and you feel like reconstructing it renovating it and then reselling it so it is not immediately available for sale okay you need some reconstruction loan okay now this will not be classified as invest as property or investment property held for sale okay because it is not available for immediate sale next Sale should be highly probable. There should be high chances of probability of such sale. Okay. Now we'll understand these both terms in detail. Firstly, probable sale means what? Probable sale means of, uh, will be considered when only and only when these following five conditions are satisfied. That is, firstly, appropriate level of management must be committed to a plan to sell the asset. For example, a clerk okay uh, things sits on his desk and things like okay i should sell this asset let's sell this asset okay nothing happens nothing happens because the he does not have appropriate level of authority to sell that asset to decide about that asset okay so any authority any manager or any person who has such authority to dis take decision about the sale of such asset gets committed okay commits and makes a plan to sell such uh, sell such asset will be considered as 
probable sale. Nextly, an active program to locate buyer has been initiated. Okay, that is appointment of any broker or any commission agent. Okay, these all have been programmed and planned. Next, third, sale is expected to be completed in next twelve months. Okay, in near next twelve months, it is expected that such sale will be exercised, will be completed, and will be uh, the such asset will be encashed. Okay, next, asset will realize current fair value. current market value that is being uh, recorded that is being uh, i think that is being valued for such asset so such fair value realization should be there for such current asset other than this it is unlikely that decision will change there is no uncertainty about the sale of such asset okay about selling such asset there is no doubt about it okay there should be no change in such plan if these five conditions are satisfied then we can classify such non current asset as what as held for sale and such five conditions are there are to satisfy probable means of selling next available for immediate sale means what firstly it should be pres it should be it should be saleable or it should be available for sale in present conditions okay for example you have a machine and you think for selling it you need some repairs you see, need some spare part and you need some maintenance so that it can be reset okay if such condition is there then it won't be uh, considered as available for immediate sale if you are ready to sell such machine in the present condition as it is then it will be considered as available for immediate sale or changes required for such sale are permitted for example if you need to make any changes and you have got such permission then such changes are permitted and then also such asset will be considered as available for immediate sale other than this an exception is there for example if you try to reconstruct or restructure or renovate such asset to extend to change it okay if such uh if such intentions are there if such plan is there then it will not be considered as available for immediate sale next exception of 12 months okay in some cases in some cases the entity will be allowed to complete such sale for months more than 12 months when only and only when delay is due to circumstances which were not in control they they cannot the entity cannot control such situation such dispute or any other thing okay such delay is not because of them but because of some circumstances that are unavoidable that are uncontrollable secondly other than this there must be sufficient evidence that an entity is still committed to the plan that they still stick to the plan of selling such asset okay these both conditions should be satisfied then only such extension of more than 12 months will be provided to the entity and it can classify it can continue to classify such asset as held for sale okay now if you have acquired any asset for the whole sole purpose of reselling it in case then it will be classified as held for sale from the date of acquisition okay from the first date of acquisition it shall be classified as held for sale from the date of acquisition from the first day the day it was bought next comes is measurement and accounting on the due on the date of held for sale that is first recognition first time recording okay in the next slide we'll talk about subsequent recording so what happens is first step is calculate carrying amount here we refer as ca carrying amount carrying amount will be calculated as historical cost that at which you purchased otherwise then this any revaluation if you have done now deduct accumulated depreciation deduct accumulated impairment loss if any and then the amount that you get is known as carrying amount okay now second step comes is calculate fair value less cost to sale fair value that is market value okay other than this less what cost to sale that is if any cost that occur for selling that is selling cost that is any brokerage commission anything Uh, loading and loading freight transportation any those charges will be deducted for example if you have if you calculate the fair value of rupees 1 lakh okay and the selling cost is rupees 5000 for example so the fair value your it will be taken as rupees what it will be taken as rupees 95000 net of cost to sale net of selling cost now after doing this compare step 1 and step 2 
okay so what happens if carrying amount is greater than fair value okay that is the market value is lesser but carrying amount is uh, higher then what happens the difference is transferred to pnl whereas if the amount is equal carrying amount and fair value are equal if there is no difference then no treatment ignore this other than this if fair value is lesser uh, no if carrying amount is lesser than fair value okay that is if you sell in the market you'll get some higher appreciation than the carrying amount okay so unrealized appreciation is ignored as per the rules of accounting standards that we used to study earlier also okay so unrealized unrealized expected uh, appreciations are ignored therefore if carrying amount is less than fair value that is fair value market value is higher then ignore such will not be recorded that is expected uh, gains are not recorded measurement and accounting on subsequent reporting that is uh, calculate fair value less cost to asset similarly that way and calculate the carrying amount and you don't have to calculate because it, it you have recorded in the first time so it will be available in the last balance sheet date now compare step 1 and step 2 that is carrying amount that is available in the balance sheet and the fair value less cost to asset cost to sale now if if carrying amount is greater than fair value then transfer to pl if equal no treatment and if carrying amount is less than fair value okay if carrying amount is less than fair value then if up to the previous return down Uh, amount that you have debited in the pnl reverse it credit it to the pnl whereas and the remaining balance above carrying amount will be ignored will be no treatment will be done okay so you are doing this only up to the carrying amount the amount above carrying amount is ignored and the amount that was previously debited to pnl is reversed in case if see if carrying amount is less than fair value this is done while subsequent report next treatment of change in plan to sale in case if a business if an an entity decides that uh, let's not sell this okay let's not sell this it may happen because it's a business there are uncertain circumstances change in circumstances okay due to anything any reason they decide not to sell it or to sell it whatever now what happens step 1 calculate carrying amount as if the non current asset or the disposal group is held for sale okay calculate the carrying amount secondly calculate recoverable amount what is that fair value less cost uh, cost to disposal and value in use whichever is higher will be taken after doing this compare step 1 and step 2 whichever is lower will be recorded in the books of account for example if you calculate carrying amount as rupees 1 lakh and if you take higher of this and you get rupees 95000 so whichever is lower out of 1 lakh and 95000 will be recorded in books that is 95000 will be recorded in balance sheet okay next points to remember there are some certain points that need to be kept in mind while doing this uh, a treatment first non current asset or disposal group held for sale shall be carried shall be recorded in balance sheet either at carrying amount or at fair value less cost to sale that is okay very important thing that if once the asset is held as classification from such date you are not allowed to charge any depreciation do not charge any depreciation from the date with the such asset is classified as held for sale very important questions uh, regarding this uh, certainly come okay it can also be asked in interview next allocation of loss in case of disposal group firstly charge from goodwill and if remaining balance any then in the such proportionate will be done in the ratio of the carrying amount of such non current assets or the disposal group other than this assets or projects that are abandoned that are stopped in between due to any reason due to any dispute okay any reason then such asset is not permitted to be classified as not classified as held for sale next mere intention to sale okay so for example i am sitting on my desk and think that okay let's sell this next month okay i just have atten- uh, intentions but i do i have not planned anything or i am not committed to it then it won't be he- classified as held for sale mere intentions do not amount to classification as held for sale there should be some av- availability of plans availability of commitments 
Next, investment in subsidiary associate joint venture will be further evaluated only and only if the relation, the control, the influence changes. That is, for example, you if you if an entity had a subsidiary, if you had a subsidiary, okay, and you had 90% control over it. After such classification, after selling, after selling, after selling, you only have 45%. So this needs further classification. In case if you had 90% before and after selling you just have 85%. Does it make any change, any difference in the control in the power? No. So such control is not changed and further evaluation is not required. Other than this, very important note, sale of subsidiary, okay, in case if you have to sell any subsidiary can be recorded as non current asset held for sale. You have seen this in the first second slide also where the applicability was done. It was PPE investment property. Okay. And other than this, there was investment also. Okay. Next discontinued operation. This also is covered in this standard. A discontinued operation of an entity that either has been disposed of either it has been sold off or is classified as held of held for sale and and it represents separate major line of business. This is very important. Okay. It should not be a very small area of anything and combined. It should be a separate major line of business and that is being discontinued. This will be considered as discontinued operation. For, for example, your entity is selling steel as well as salt. Okay. These are two major different separate lines of business. Either of it is closed will be considered as discontinued business operations or it should represent any separate different geographical area or it is a part of single coordinated plan a single plan is there to e execute the whole sale other than this subsidiary acquired with view of disposal okay any subsidiary that has been acquired can be con classified as asset held for sale next discontinued operation presentation you have to show the pbt that is profit before tax taxes and profit after tax for such from such discontinued business in the PNL separately. Okay, it should be shown in the PNL separately. Other than this, disclosure requirements: any revenue, any expense, any income, any gain loss on such disposal or income tax. These all have to be recorded and shown as disclosure in the books of accounts. Okay, this is very important. I hope you understood this. That's all about the standard. Okay, the same standard is also recorded in Hindi and is available on the channel. Check it out. In the description box, the PPT and the PDF and the notes are available. Download it. Keep it for your reference. Okay, all the very best. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Be safe. Stay tuned.